Hi, I'm Dan Slagan, CMO of Thrive 5, and welcome to another episode of Locals. We're here today in Cambridge, Massachusetts, with chef and owner of two, soon to be three restaurants in the Cambridge area, Delio Susie. How are you? Doing well. Welcome yeah. to the show. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So you own two Italian restaurants. Uh, yeah. You're in the in the makings of, of a third, which is going to be Mexican. Yes. But we're currently in your first restaurant. This yep. is Italian, uh, Amelia's Trattoria. This is the mothership. Yes. Yeah. This is awesome. So tell us a little bit about this uh, this restaurant. So uh, Amelia's is a local restaurant, obviously in Cambridge, that's been open for about 20 years. Uh, December we turned 20. And uh, yeah, it's just like a local, it's become a local favorite. It's a small, quaint Italian restaurant with handcrafted food, as local as we can be. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you have another Italian place down the street that we're going to go check out as well. Yeah, Simone is like our large format, live, uh, fun kind of spot. It's, although it's Italian, it's a lot different than Amelia's. Got it. Should we go check it out? Yeah, let's go. All right. We're heading to Simone's. Let's do it. So for those not familiar with, uh, with the area, we're, we're here in Kendall Square in Cambridge. Yep. Uh, your next restaurant's only about a two or three minute walk from, from the first one. That's right. So you've been running Amelia's for how many years? Uh, it is going to be 20 years in December. 20 yep. years. At what point did you think to yourself, I want to open up a second restaurant? Um, well, honestly, it happened fairly quickly and then we backed off because of economy state and whatnot. But um, yeah, I think, I think when we're, we were in like the 16th year of Amelia's, I think then we were, we were thinking again to have a new restaurant, you know? I yeah. think that was the time and we love the area so much. We saw Kendall grow basically from, from small to what it is today yeah. and still growing. So that's when we thought that we needed another restaurant. Got it. What goes into opening up a second location? I talked to so many local business owners and they talk about the transition of going from just having one to two. How do you know when it's time to do the second? Is it, is it easier when you open up a second time or is it a whole nother start to finish? Or? Well, I think it's like having a child, right? You're never ready. Okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, yes, you do learn a lot more on the second one, right? So some owner is a lot bigger than Amelia's, right? Amelia's is a smaller format. And so you do a lot of things in a smaller format, which basically trains you for the larger format. But you do, do I've learned so much in the last three years that, uh, and that's hence the third restaurant, uh, I feel like that I can now move on. Got it. All yeah. right, so we'll get to the third restaurant yeah. in a little bit, but I want yeah. to talk about uh, you. You've yeah. been in this area uh, practically your whole life. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about sort of your, your childhood, what, what got you into to cooking, and what, yeah. what made you know you wanted to be a, a restaurant owner? Uh, well, uh, I was a young kid that was born in the north end of Boston yep. uh, to two immigrant parents. Uh, Everyone's from Italy. Everyone's from Italy, Everyone's except from Italy. Uh, me and my brother and some cousins. Yeah. Uh, so we're, I'm first generation American, and uh, food has been in my in my life, my whole life. It's been the focal point of, of holidays, the focal point of birthdays, unfortunately the focal point of deaths. Yeah. And so food is love in the Italian family and everything surrounds it by that. Now, I also went to architectural school because I also love design, but food won. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, working in restaurants as a, you know, a young teenager and a young adult, I fell in love with the industry. Who doesn't want to eat a taco on a roof deck, right? Yeah. And so, and that's the dream. So yeah. you dream it. And then when they tell you that it can become reality, then you push forward to make it reality. So during going to college and working in these, you know, in these restaurants, I did fall in love. It's like, it was, uh, it was definitely a second passion that became a first passion. Yeah. 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 And this area, so Kendall Square is a huge, vibrant part of the, the Boston tech and startup scene, but mm -hmm. how has it evolved over the years and how did you guys decide to, to come to this part of, of the city? Uh, honestly, it was, uh, it was on, honestly by accident, but uh, we had a restaurant in Somerville uh, called Amelia's Kitchen that uh, my father and my mother and I opened. And one of our purveyors said, hey, there's a spot available in Cambridge, kind of off the beaten path. 
uh, you guys want to take a look at it? And at that point, I said, I grew up on Cherry Street basically with a friend of mine. I said, oh, it's right near where I grew up and hung out. Let's go take a look at it. And I fell in love with it right when I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. And it, when you opened Amelia's, I mean, and as you opened Simona's, your, your second restaurant here, how do, you, how do you go about sort of making that announcement to the community? How do you get people into the restaurant? Uh, essentially, how do you do your marketing? Uh, marketing is a lot word of mouth. Uh, we did hire, uh, we hired a PR team in the beginning to get uh, some of the name outside of Cambridge, but some of the regulars that have come in for years and years and years, that was word of mouth that they were coming in and that's basically how we did that. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, we, we, uh, we depend on our laurels, right? Yeah. No, I mean, w word of mouth uh, referrals is always something we hear from local businesses. Yes. Is there a way that you try and control it? increase it or we we are we are very very sensitive about how people review us and how people look at us and we 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 don't want anyone to be have a bad experience in our restaurant so yeah we're in we are i always say my famous line is we're in the busy the business of happy and not sad yeah. you know so we try to keep everyone as happy as possible so yeah yeah. And how, how do you think about that? Reviews are huge, uh, whether yeah. it's local business or consumer or e-commerce. Mm -hmm. How do you think about all the different review sites? I mean, you have Google, you have Yelp, you have OpenTable, you have other. Right. Do you have a strategy for each one or do you just sort of say, we're going to put our best product out there and we hope that the end result is a positive review across the board? Well, yeah, we, that's what we do. We put our best product out there and we try to, if someone does have a bad experience we try to reach out to that person and bring them back and win them over again because we don't want anyone leaving here unhappy yeah. you know so well, yeah yeah well i ate, i ate here at simona over the weekend i can tell you we did not leave uh, right. unhappy good um so this is simona's this is your second restaurant that's right uh, tell us a little bit about this this location well uh this location came to me uh with one of my partners eric he brought it to my attention and uh he said it was available, that this business uh, building was coming up and there was some spots available. Where it's so close to Amelia's, we figured that we would do a premier nice Italian restaurant in this location, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so, all right, so you just, you saw it, we're about a five minute walk from restaurant to restaurant. Right. They're both Italian. Yeah. What's the difference between, between the two? So Amelia's, again, it's become an institution in Cambridge. It's a small, quaint, white tablecloth, intimate type of sort of setting restaurant in the neighborhood. This in the neighborhood is more festive, more fun, although it can be intimate and you can have private moments here. It's also the big, it's the, it's the loud, it's the uh, sharing of food, the tapas, it's the pizza, which I've always wanted to do anyway. I, I went back to doing, but yep. uh, yeah, so that's it. This is Salmona. Yeah, got it. And so this has been open for? This is going on its third year. On its third year. Yes. When you're initially starting, how do you go about putting together a menu and does it change a couple times a year or do you pretty much have a set? It almost changes on a daily basis. The main structure of, of Simona's menu, this type of food, stays structured, right? Pizza, arancini, rossaccinis, those are things that always stay on the menu. Fish of the night changes, pasta of the night changes, panini changes on almost a daily basis. Soups change on a daily basis. Specials change on a daily basis. So, yeah, we almost like make a menu within a menu, you know? Yeah. And then sometimes we also feature some uh, menus like uh, we'll do a hunter's dinner or we'll do a uh, feast of the seven fishes, which is coming up in December. So those are special menus we put on the menu. Yeah, and yeah. For that is, a, is a, a good point. Do you guys do a lot of events or sort of special themed nights to bring the community? We do. We do. Yeah. We do a porchetta night. Uh, like I said, we do the uh, hunter's dinner, which is all game meats. We do uh, Feast of the Seven Fishes, those type of things. Valentine's Day, we'll step up specials. Mother's Day, we'll step up brunch specials. So those type of things. Yeah, got it. Yeah. When you look at this restaurant and, and the other restaurant uh, right now, how do you think about being a part of the, the local community? I mean, I've, spending time in, in your restaurant this I morning, mean, I, you I, got people coming in and out, you got vendors, you got employees, <laughs> right, like you got right, everyone right. in town. Right, right. Um, what does community mean for, for you as a, as a 
restaurant owner? I mean, honestly, community means a lot because I came back to the community I literally grew up in. I played on Cherry Street as a young kid, and I can't even believe I bookend Harvard Street as a kid. I ran these streets so with my friends. So, yeah, um, yeah community means a lot. It, being in this area means a lot. I love Kendall. I've loved it since a kid, and that's why it's important that we have these restaurants here. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. Can we take a look inside? Yeah, let's come Simona? on in. Yeah. All right, so now we're inside Simona. So you said you went to architecture school. I did. There's yes. no Mark way was. that that didn't play a role <laughs> in the experience and yeah. the ambiance here. Well, Tell I can't take full credit. Uh, Eric Luciano was one of the designer that helped me out here. But uh, as I spewed, he put it on the paper, so okay. yes. So tell us about the ambiance or the experience that, that you're um, trying to create here. Well, the experience I try to create here, I, do, I love the industrious look. I always wanted to make it feel homey since it's a corporate building, so you want it to feel like you're, you're away from the outside corporate world. So yeah. when you walk into Simona, you feel like you're in, in old factory or an old building or an old train station and that's the type of feeling that I wanted to feel. Behind you there's these uh, arches that uh, mimic the aqueducts that are in the uh, uh, the piazza of Sulmona, the actual piazza which is a, uh, a courtyard. These are the aqueducts that cut across. Yeah. Uh, we used a lot of metal, we used a lot of tile to give the sense of uh, uh, a factory or an older look, you know? Yeah. yeah. I look at this as sort of your one part of the product that you offer people. You know, you got a, a moped hanging hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. What What do you want people to really feel when they're when they're in the restaurant? I want them to feel comfortable. I want them to feel that they're in a vibrant place. I want them to feel that we do take attention to detail, and that's how we take it on the food and the service and the drink. Yeah. And so it starts with the look, and it ends with the product. Yeah, and you, yeah. you talk about service. So across your two restaurants now, um, I don't know how many people you employ, but how do you go about hiring and employee management and, and, and that yeah. whole strategy? Because at, at the local level, it, it's hard. It is hard. And you know, in the beginning, it was a little hard. It's still hard. It's, it's hard. But as we get good people, they bring good people. And we treat it like a family. It's not, we're not corporate. We're not, you know, we're not stiff like that. It really is a family. And if, you know, and, and that's, the good people feel that and they bring people in because they want them to work here too because it's a family oriented thing. Yeah. All the partners, all the partners in Sulmona have small children. And so we are a family unit. This is a family, you know, yeah. and that's how we treat it. Yeah. You know? How do you know? that a, a new new hire or someone who's working here is going to treat customers the same way you would. Like, I, I get a sense that if I were to sit down here and you were waiting on us, you yeah. would tell us everything about yes. the restaurants, yes. the menu, yes. you've got to try yeah. this, did yeah. you like that? Yeah. How do you know that that same vibrancy and, and, and well, care can, to detail is going to come across in everyone that you hire? It's, a, it's an awesome question. You can see the enthusiasm in a hire right at the interview and state, you know? They're interested in food, they're interested in the story, they're interested in the place. Usually the place takes the matter off first and then then we talk about the story. And I'm yeah. usually the storyteller as you can tell. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I talk about the story and I give the background because Simona is a special place. That is where my parents were born. So this is a special place. It goes right to the core. This food is not this food is what I grew up with. This food is where I live with. So this is what I convey to the employees. Yeah. And, uh, and most of them love the story. So they tell yeah. the story back to the people. Yeah, so yeah. there's a sense of passion. There is, yeah. The, there is. yeah. It's if all you, about passion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you uh, got a Saturday, uh, Saturday night off, you're coming out to dinner, and you're coming here, what are you, what are you ordering? Let's see. I have the octopus. OK. The chicken liver. OK. Love it. Uh, and I always top, toss from meat to fish, but I'd have either a chipino or a porchetta. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And if I was to do a mid-course pasta course, because we're Italian, we eat too much, uh, I would do the wild boar. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, sounds good. So I want to transition a little bit. So yeah. you have two Italian restaurants. Two Italian restaurants. Both yeah. are off and running. Yep. Uh, you get this idea a couple years ago, two years ago maybe, for another yep. restaurant. Almost three years ago, yeah. Almost three years ago. Yeah. 
you already own two Italian restaurants, yes. so the next one is not going to be Italian. It is not. And you're saying it's going to be Mexican. It is. Tell us about this story. I mean, uh, I'm a chef, right? So I have all these brotherins that I work with, and they happen to be Latinos mostly. And um, uh, I've been around the food, Latino food, my whole wow. entire l career as a chef. And I feel connected to this Mexican cuisine because I love it personally. I love Mexican food and uh, it feels comfortable to me. Um, I think I was explaining to you earlier that it's, uh, I'm a European style chef, but that food feels to, at home with me. Mm. The culture feels at home to me. The food feels at home to me. And who doesn't love Mexican food, right? Yeah, yeah so let, let, let's talk about that. And the restaurant's around the corner? It here? is, it's right down the street. All right, should we walk over there? And yeah. Walk? What do you feel like are the similarities and differences between sort of the Italian and Mexican foods? Well, like, like for you, you're obviously very comfortable cooking um, Italian food. Yeah. What, what makes you confident or interested in heading down the, the route of a Mexican restaurant? Well, I mean, the, if, you, if you look at Mexican food, the braisings and the, ma the making of the masas, and I mean, you can, you can, you can assimilate it to, uh, you know, asabuco and, uh, and porchetta and making bread and making piadinis and and all those types of things. So that's, that's the similarities. The differences is the spice profiles, you know, okay. where Mexicans have a high, higher heat profile, more spices. We're gonna have to take a walk that way, right. yeah? So, yeah, that's what I would say. The differences is, is in the spices. But technique-wise, they're almost similar. Yeah. 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 What, what's the, the moment when you go from I have an idea to open up a new restaurant to I'm actually going to do it. Did you have one of those aha moments where you said we're, we're going to do it and if so, what was it? Or was it a little more natural? How, how did it come about? I am always thinking about new ideas. I can tell. <laughs> to the chagrin of my wife. Okay. But I am She's always... like, we have two, they're going well, maybe we should just... Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. She's the conservative one, but yeah, I'm always, I'm always uh, thinking about new ideas and what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. It's this not really an aha moment. It's like almost an everyday, everyday occurrence. So, yeah. Funny. But, and yeah. so where, where, does it, where does it start? When you're starting a new restaurant, which you're now at right smack dab in the middle of, what, take us through the, the process a little bit. I mean, honestly, some, for me, the, the process is passion, right? Yeah. Uh, if I don't believe I can do something, I won't do it. So to me, I believe I can do it. I've been... Uh, you know, I've been a professional Italian cook for 20 years, but I've been a at-home Mexican cook for 20 years, you know? So I believe I can do it. I have the passion, that's where it starts. And then, and then I just write my idea down. And from there, it, it, um, it takes off, usually. Yeah. And I get myself in trouble. <laughs> Funny, so we're here. We're here. So this, so this is the space. Oh, so this is right across. This, it's nice yeah. to have all your restaurants in one. Yeah, one it, and, and that makes it nice too because I stay in the community that I love and I'm not too far away from them and they can all get my attention Yeah. at some point, you yeah. know? Got it. So this is currently uh, a Mexicali. burrito. Yeah, Mexicali, yeah, burrito. Uh, and uh, it will turn into a three-level Mexican restaurant. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So you, it's always interesting uh, when people are opening up new businesses or new product ideas. Yep. There obviously are other Mexican restaurants in there Cambridge is. and in the city. Yep. How do you think about differentiating or finding your own unique voice here to make the, the new place stand out? And what, what's your thought process there? Mm -hmm. Well, design first, right? Like as we walked into Somona, you have a feeling in the design. Yeah. And then the food is the super focal because it has to be good and the drinks have to be good. So I'm gonna try to stay as local as possible Yeah. and uh, put my techniques to it. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, that's it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So uh, you talk a little about design. So right now this is a one, one floor. Um, so, so one floor, uh, one level restaurant that's a quick service restaurant okay yeah. so and, and, and to make this a premier three level restaurant um, 
there's going to be loads of construction going on, okay? Yeah. Which, which I love in the background, as you know, I'm an architect major. Uh, there'll be operable windows on the first floor. That means the whole restaurant will open on the first floor. There'll be a trellis on the outside. There'll be outside seating. Uh, there'll be an elevator shaft on the outside, and then there'll be a roof deck with a head house on top. So up here, this this is going to go under a major transformation. How how do you know that that's what needs to happen? Like, how do you look at this and say we need to have outdoor seating? We have a roof deck. Do you do you look around and say this this is what's missing from the neighborhood, or this yes. is just what I want to do? Yeah, it's surprisingly enough, there's no large format Mexican restaurant in the neighborhood. It's not a place to get a margarita and salsa and chips in this particular neighborhood. Yeah. And then the roof deck element is, who doesn't want to eat a taco on a roof deck, right? Yeah. And so, and that's the dream. So yeah. you dream it, and then when they tell you that it can become reality, then you push forward to make it reality. Yeah. Yeah. And in your head, start to finish, how long from idea to grand opening and that's is a, this process? That, that's a great question. So, Simona was, idea to grand opening was about, two and a half years and this was it's going to be almost three years almost three years yeah so that's an interesting question for me so you have multiple locations you yeah. have some responsibilities that are short term and you have some responsibilities that are more long term that's right how do you make sure you stay focused on the day to day of your two operating restaurants while also investing enough passion into the longer term <laughs> investment that you want here it's not going to pay off for another, let's say, five five years down the line. It's called multitasking, <laughs> and you have to be really good at it. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I can't take all the credit. Uh, my partners, Carmelo and Eric, helped me out immensely yeah. on that. Um, we all, like I said before, we had a conversation off camera that we're all good at different things, and so we focus on what we're good at, and and then we attack it from there. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing I'm assuming you're good at and passionate about is the menu. Oh yeah. So tell us a little bit about the menu ideation and the testing you must do at home or yeah. wherever. What well, goes into that? Well, I mean, this menu here, as I can picture it in my mind now, yeah. as we're writing recipes and we're going, will be somewhat classic, like the El Pastor's and the Carnitas and Asadas. And then I want to do my interpretation of tacos. So it'll be a balance between, you know, uh, uh, my version of taco and what is classic. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I think that's the way I'm going to go with it. All right. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, should we head back to Amelia's? The, Let's do the it. First? All right. Sounds good. Uh, all right. So at this point, we've seen all three restaurants. Yep. Um, you know, I'm curious to get your sense as just a, a, a small business owner. Um, tell us about how you balance work and life or if it's all just intertwined I mean how much of your work goes to the house how much of the house comes into work right uh, I, it's always interesting just to know kind of the life of a small business owner and right. what it's like right well I you know I made a pact to myself uh, when my daughter was born that I don't want to miss big moments you know so in doing so you have to have a good staff which we do you yeah. have a great staff and um, I try to balance life work. Now, the kids and my wife, they come in to eat at the restaurants every day and they're around the restaurants every day. So we're kind of intertwined in that sense. But anything special or any special event, I try not to miss. Yeah. So, and um, yeah, because it's not all worth it if, if you miss these moments, you know? Yeah. You have to have moments with your family. And the restaurant business is demanding. At times, you do have to miss some things, but you try to win the majority of those things. And you try to uh, balance it out. Yeah. You know, and that's I, very important. It, I, I love that. And, yeah. and as the owner, when you're away from any of the restaurants, mm -hmm. how much of the detail of the day-to-day -day do you want to know versus you just want to entrust in, in, in your managers? Uh, I mean, I want to know. Uh, I want to know as much as I can because it's very important to know things in the restaurant business. Like, if there was an unhappy customer, I would like to know that. Yeah. You know, uh, we have things called daily reports where they report back to us and say what happened for the night. If we weren't there for the night, let's just say Carmelo, Eric, and I weren't there for the evening. 
uh, they come back and say, you know, what happened to the night and why they made some voids or why somebody was unhappy. And then we address it the next day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do want to know. Yeah. And th I think that's interesting, too, because I, I find this in my job as well. When you're constantly talking to customers and your staff and getting feedback, yep. how do you differentiate a one-off occurrence versus a trend, whether it's, it, it's good or bad? Because you're getting so much feedback right. all the time from right. various people. And sometimes the feedback, well, all feedback is helpful, uh, right. but sometimes it's actionable and sometimes it's not. Right. Um, well, you know, in the case of an employee, you're saying an employee versus, you know, with the customer case. Yeah. You know, if we work with the employee long enough, you know the history of the employee. We get to know our employees pretty in depth, you know. Um, you're not just a number. Like I said, you're a family member. And mm. So we take it case by case. In other words, if the employee's made that mistake once, you know, he's not gonna, he or she is not gonna be um, looked upon badly. Then yeah. if that happens more than one time, then that's a trend, and then we have to talk to the employee that sense, at that state, you know? Yeah, I, I love what you said about sort of creating a family environment for your staff. I think in, in both of our worlds, hiring is the most important thing you can it's do. It's very important. How do you go about thinking of creating that that type of family environment because I could tell I mean, even just, just seeing people coming out of your restaurant this morning it's clear you guys are, are, are a tight-knit group tight-knit yeah it, I mean we see each other more than our families at times you yeah. know like I said you know <clears throat> kids are in school you know you work you know I work 60 70 hours a week so yes you see each other more than one time and it starts with it, it, it honestly starts with the owners you know what I mean when I went in partners with uh, Eric and Carmelo uh, at Simona, that was really important to me that they were on the same page as I was as far as like um, employee boss ratio. There is mm. no, there's hierarchy, obviously we are bosses, but we have to be sensitive to people's uh, needs. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And as you guys have opened up multiple locations, do you find that the, the culture is different in the locations? Do you try, try to instill a similar culture across both? No, we try to instill the same culture from the little 39 seat restaurant to the, to the 150 seat restaurant, same culture. Yeah, yep. right. that, make, that makes yep. sense. Yeah, and matter of fact, we intertwine some of the employees work there, they work here. Oh, nice. uh, any employees that work for Salmona can get a discount at Amelia's, vice versa. Got it. You know, Got so it. we try to, make it a family unit. Nice. You know? Well, we're back here at, at Amelia's. Yep. Uh, Delio, thank you so much for the time. Thank this you for awesome having to, to go through everything. Yeah. Thank you. It was great. Awesome. All right, that wraps up season one of Locals. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next season.